so far from the attitude of modern libertarians who would end the Union and let slavery continue to exist. They say, they say not only should Abraham Lincoln not have stopped the South from seceding, but it was none of the North's business whether or not the South had slaves. None of their business. Nonsense. If you violate somebody's rights, you have no rights. Your nation has no rights if it's the habitual violator of rights, it itself can claim no rights, and anyone who invades on any grounds uh, does so with all the moral righteousness possible. The, the only problem would be conscription, which apparently Lincoln did, and just about any major country does ever, and uh, there's, there's few arguments for conscription, very few, and I think that at the end of this investigation we're going to see, uh, I, I believe, that uh, the evidence points to the conclusion that they, the only course was to go forward with the Civil War. That, that, that's the only thing they could do. No matter how bloody it got, the only thing was to keep on going. There's no point, no point at which you could say, this has cost too many lives. Because it was too dear of a subject. It was too dear. It was too extremely valuable to the people involved on both sides. So at no point could they stop and say, too many people have died, we capitulate. Life is not uh, an object of value when the question of your values that encompass your whole life are in danger. Then, then even your life doesn't matter. So, so, in other words, if you have to give up the values which, in essence, are your life in order to continue living, Why continue living? And that's civil war. So, we can't blame it on Lincoln. Now, what we can blame on Lincoln, it seems to me, if you look at De Lorenzo's stuff, what you can blame on Lincoln is his nonsense and, uh, you know, arresting people for, for uh, speaking out against the North and stuff, or anyone who criticized battle plans or whatever. That's very dangerous. As somebody, I, I, I don't know, I mean, we're going to have to investigate that at length, but it, it's happened in every one of our wars. We restrict freedom during the war and let them up afterwards. The danger is perpetual war, which we've entered after 9-11, which we actually entered during the Cold War. It actually started in 1950, 51 maybe, with Korea. The fact that we could go enter a war without the Congress and Senate declaring war. That's when we lost the power, not uh, in 9-11. 9-11 is just the next shifting gear, the upstage, the next phase of the fact that we've lost the power. The people of America have lost the power to wage war. Now it's in the hands of the president. So Adams is saying, even if you break the damn thing apart, the next stage is going to be a fight uh, to invade that slave-ridden, evil place down there, you know? Slavery had been outlawed in a lot of other countries without bloodshed. But uh, it wasn't to be in America. It wasn't to be. There was too much economic interest ingrained. There was too much fervor on both sides. It wasn't just like some slaveholders, you know. It wasn't just a part of society. It wasn't a caste or whatever. It was an entire way of life, a whole region, ingrained over decades. Probably the guiltiest party, I think, maybe, would be the Founding Fathers. I think they're probably the guiltiest. We could probably put all half a million deaths of the Civil War on the heads of the Founding Fathers. Right on top of their head. Because they're the ones who let slavery through. They're the ones who went ahead and, 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 and put past it. They're the ones who did it. Now, that's the sticky part because the argument is they couldn't have done the Constitution would have happened. They would have been they would have confederated the North and the South would have been whatever it was. Uh, they maybe they would have confederated too. But you the, the argument is that if you outlawed slavery at that time, nothing couldn't happen. The best they could do was to say twenty years from now you can't import slaves anymore. That was the best they could do. In spite of the fact that Jefferson, a slave owner, wanted to abolish slavery. Um in, fi in spite of the fact that a lot of people believed that if they could strike a fatal blow to slavery right now, it would be fantastic. Um, in spite of that, it didn't happen. They didn't do it. 
they went ahead and did the Constitution the way they did. Now, we'll investigate the Constitution at length, but that's not our task at this moment. Right now, we're going to skip to part three, page 423. America, and I, I quote, this is highly edited, as you know, in most of my quotes. America was not prescriptive, skipping down a bit. It was rather an artificial state, or a series of states bound together by negotiated agreements and compacts, charters and covenants. Uh, up until the Civil War, America was still those 13 colonies. Each independent thing was its own place. The federal government did stuff, but was very weak. Up until the Civil War, uh, the nation was a confederation of independent states. That's, that's the point he's getting at here. It was not prescriptive. It was not, you are part of us. Up until then, it was a uh, voluntary union. Now, that's because no one had tried to secede. <laughs> the, the whole time, it wasn't a voluntary. It was never a voluntary union. Once they had all gotten in a group, anybody who broke off was saying, I'm taking land away from this group. Th this group has gotten together and said, we have a common interest to stay in, in a single lump. And then some single group, just part of this factional, part of a state, 80%, maybe 70%, gets hold of this state and says they want to take this piece of land. No, 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 that land's ours. So it would have been a war at any point. It just didn't erupt till the 1860s. As we heard earlier, it's a wonder that it didn't happen in the 1820s. It's just a wonder. Why didn't it happen in the 1820s? All that happened in the intervening time, they should have done it. They should have done it. They should have outlawed slavery. All that happened in the intervening time was they got better guns, more deadly guns, uh, more productivity, more steel, more uh, explosives and stuff. Explosives got cheaper uh, so that uh, it just multiplied the death rate. They should have outlawed it sooner. Uh, it was John Marshall who first asserted in 1821 that America was a nation. Uh, quote, America has chosen to be in many respects and for many purposes a nation. In many respects and for many purposes. Now, he called it a, a nation in 1821. Uh, the word nation is not in the Constitution. The word nation was not allowed in the Constitution. You know the National Road. You've heard of the National Road uh, that they tried to build. There was a hubbub about whether or not that could, should be called national. Because they, they, this is a, a confederation. This is a union. This is not a nation. This is a union, a confederation, a grouping. This is a gathering. We're together in a group. This is not a nation. This is a union. That's, that, that's the attitude up until a certain point. But he continues, this leads one to ask, in what respects and for what purposes was America not a nation? If it was in many respects and for many purposes a nation, how and in what respects was it not a nation? The word is not to be found in the Constitution. Um, and we skip down just a bit. Uh, yes, but whose Constitution? That as seen by the North or the one as seen by the South? The one that the South treasured, or the one in the 18, uh, the one in the 1850s interpreted by the Southern-dominated Taney Supreme Court, is that the one? Which of the constitutions do you say uh, we go with? The North, increasingly driven by emancipationists, thought of the Constitution as a document which, when applied in its spirit, would eventually ensure that all people in America, whatever their color, black or white, whatever their uh, status, slave or free, would be equal before the law. That was a basic assumption that the Constitution was going to be something that equalized all men. All men are created equal and if we are different in any way from all of the kings and nonsense before us, if there's any way that we're different at all, then it's the equality of mankind before the law. If that's, if that's our, the only difference we have then we should be proudest of that. There is no other difference between us and all other societies in the past. 